Welcome everybody. Welcome to the Pursuit webinar on your balance sheet post COVID. Thank you for joining us. So a little bit of introduction before we jump right into the material. Pursuit, you may have heard of us. We are a community focused lender. Um, we're mission based. We focus on small business owners, um, minority women, veterans, businesses of all kinds. We started 65 years ago as the New York Business Development Corporation, but we now serve all of New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. And what do we serve them with? About 15 different loan programs, many associated with the SBA. But more than that, we are providing great level of resources, connections to expert and expert content to small business owners. And this webinar today is part of the goods that we deliver to the small business community. So thank you again for joining us. So my name is Carol O'Connell. I am an assistant vice president at Pursuit. I help with loan programs, but also I do a lot of facilitation. And I'm very excited today to facilitate this workshop that is going to be held by one of our great consultants, Alec Marfizi, founder of Upwind Strategies. He's worked with, with hundreds of small business owners from getting you started all the way to growth mode. So Alec, thank you so very much for joining us today. Thank you, Carol. Hello, everyone, and uh, looking forward to uh, getting this started. Great. So I'm just going to um, talk about what we will cover. So why are you listening? If any of this applies to you, then stay tuned. Stay with us for the next 30 minutes. So what we have found, Pursuit, working with so, so many of our clients, they have managed to get through COVID and survive. The question is, um, what does your company look like post COVID? We found a lot of businesses were able to access relief loans, federal, state, local um, relief, relief meaning any kind of funding and resources to help you stay afloat. So, um, but it's very confusing. It's a confusing topic. What gets paid back? What doesn't get paid back? We will cover that today. Um, if you have loans that do need to get paid back, you need to track them. That gets tracked on a balance sheet. Very important, we're gonna train you. Alex is gonna discuss where that belongs on a balance sheet, how you can give a heads up to your accountant and do good job bookkeeping. Thirdly, if in fact you do have any kind of loan in the last several years, mapping out what kind of debt repayment schedule you have is really important to how it impacts your operating business cash flow. And finally, something that we find our business owners are just not focusing on as much is paying yourself. You may have salary or you may rely on distributions. The, during COVID, just surviving, a lot of owners have not taken a lot of compensation from their business. We need you to start thinking about the money you need to take from the business. Alec is gonna address it as well. So if any of these four items are relevant to you, stay with us the next 30 minutes, you're gonna learn a lot. So Alec, I'm gonna just um, turn it over to you and if questions arise, um, we'll, we'll talk about it. Um, let, let's go. Let's let's jump right into the materials. Thanks. Thank you, Carol. So where this all starts is with what happens financially to businesses during COVID-19. Uh, during COVID-19, businesses suffered a loss of revenue. That means that less revenues are available to cover the company's operating expenses and less revenues are available to cover paying the business owners and paying the business's debts. So it's a period of time where many of these costs didn't slow down, but revenues did slow down. So we all needed to do something about this. We all needed to be able to withstand and weather the storm. 
And there are a few different ways in which we did it. We did it with grants, we did it with the PPP program, and we did it with many different types of relief loans, including the EIDL or Economic Injury Disaster Loan. Now, each of these programs and its structure affects your business in a different way. And let me tell you why that's significant. Because during the year plus that has passed since COVID-19, many of our businesses have operated at a loss. But we've been able to survive because of these economic relief programs. So while we've had the cash to survive, meanwhile, our underlying business has eroded. As a result of operating at a loss for that amount of time, we've depleted what I will refer to later as the company's equity. Now, cash is very, very important in the short term, and especially during the crisis, cash is really all that matters to us to stay alive and stay open. Right. But as we start to transition into a business that's operating in a recovery, we want to be able to have retained profits in the company, which will allow us to pay ourselves in the future, save for projects that we plan to do in the future and to be able to access credit in the future. So some of the programs that exist that uh, we don't need to pay back and there's some of the programs exist that we absolutely do need to pay back. So for your clarity, the ones that we do not need to pay back are as follows. Taxable grants, non-taxable grants, forgiven PPP, and our EIDL advances. So let me take you through each of those. Taxable grants are grants at their core. And what a grant means is it's money provided by an organization or a government agency that you do not need to pay back. Now, a taxable grant means that the money you receive is treated in the same way as sales income is treated as if you made that money selling goods or services. Non-taxable grants is money that gets a special designation uh, from a government agency that says that you receive it, but you don't have to pay taxes on the money that you receive like a taxable grant. So this means that this money won't show up anywhere on your income statement, and we're gonna show you exactly how it shows up on your balance sheet. And we say forgiven PPP loans because forgiven is the critical word. And we want in the process that we go through in this uh, consulting arrangement that we work with individual businesses, we stress the fact that until a loan is forgiven, it's not forgiven. So until your PPP is officially forgiven, you still owe it like any other loan, any other debt, and you should plan to pay it back as if it were a loan. But once it has been forgiven, you can consider it funds that don't have to be paid back. And finally, EIDL advances. Now, many entrepreneurs scratch their head when I mention this term, but the EIDL advance is in fact the small initial amount of money you may have received before getting an economic injury disaster loan. So this is in fact a grant from the SBA that doesn't need to be paid back and is also falls under the category of non-taxable grant. And um, Alec, in a lot of this terminology, we're finding business owners understandably um, are finding a little bit confusing. I think the, the purpose, the, the great benefit of listening in here is that even though um, you're turning your financial statements over to an accountant to prepare your taxes, these are items that you, you could just have this list and ask them because you should be working with a professional that already has done this research. So we're not, it sounds confusing, we're not asking you, um, you know, to, to be able to be fluent in it, but you need to know this stuff so you can ask your bookkeeper or your accountant, am I doing this right? So just, just for that point alone. That's right. And also many of our accountants do a lot of work for us in terms of preparing our tax filings, but don't do a lot of work for us in terms of planning ahead. So it's good to know these types of terms and these types of programs so that we can make decisions today to have a healthy business in the future. 
So COVID relief programs, as I was saying before, help us to stay alive during COVID-19. That means this money was made available to us through a variety of sources, but many of our businesses unfortunately operated at a loss. We had less revenues, but we had the same expenses that we needed to cover. So what happened for some companies is these months of losses eroded the business's equity and put it into what we like to call underwater, unbalanced sheet. So a good analogy for underwater balance sheet is just like the term underwater when you think of owning a home. So your balance sheet as a homeowner is the value of your house, the mortgage that you have, and the difference between those two numbers is your equity. So if you own a house that costs $500,000 and you have a mortgage of $400,000, you would have equity of $100,000. You can also have a house that's underwater, meaning that you have more of a mortgage than the value of your house. So you may have a mortgage of $400,000, but the house has lost value to 300. So the house and the mortgage, we have a similar structure for the business. The balance sheet works in the same way, except there's just different assets and there's different debts. So for your business, your assets are the cash you have, the equipment you have, uh, construction, uh, any sort of money your customers owe you. There's a myriad of things that we count as assets. On the side of debt, you can have all kinds of short and long-term debt, including your recovery loan. But ultimately, the difference between those two is your equity in the company. So if you haven't been able to maintain your assets because you've been losing cash as a result, of COVID-19's losses, it's possible that your business has eroded away its assets to a point where it's underwater, meaning you have more debt than assets. Things get complicated when we look at our balance sheet, especially during COVID-19, because not only do we have the debts that our business had and the assets that our business had before COVID-19, we also have these grants, recovery loan programs, and forgivable loans that now have to play into the mix. That's where preparing an accurate balance sheet comes in is very important. So a key thing to understand here is that grants and forgiven debt can help to recover your business from being underwater. And we're gonna show you an example of that in a moment. But your relief loans that you have to repay actually don't repair the situation. You receive the money and it helps you to stay alive, but because you have to pay it back, Sooner or later, your business has to make those profits back. Doesn't matter how much time it takes. So another factor that you need to consider, not only the money that you may have lost during the COVID-19 crisis, but also changes to your cash flow moving forward. You may have found that in the last few months, your business's cash flows have stabilized and you've settled into the new normal where the revenues that your company is generating at a lower level than what they were before the crisis have now reached some sort of equilibrium with the expenses that your company has. Well, soon many of the recovery loan programs that you got last year are going to start coming due and those additional payments are gonna to add to what your cost burden is as a company and you need to prepare to have enough revenue to pay for that, as well as have enough revenue to pay for your own personal living expenses. So any PPP, any PPP loans that haven't been forgiven, we should consider that within six months, they might start becoming due and you'll have to enter repayment for them. Any EIDL loans that are more than 12 months since you received the loan will start entering repayment, and you may have received a notice via email for those. And any regular SBA loans that you may have had before the crisis that were put into forbearance as a result of the crisis will be ending soon, and you will have to resume paying principal and interest. Right, or, um, or for clarification, for certain uh, business owners that had SBA loans pre-COVID, um, you did enjoy the benefit of the SBA paying your principal and interest. 
so um, not necessarily forbearance. Some You may have asked your lender for a forbearance on a loan, or you may have had that benefit of the SBA paying principal and interest. Well, those are pretty much coming to an end. The, um, that occurred in 2020 was one program where the SBA was paying. They re renewed that um, in 2021, but for the most part that uh, for the second half of 2021, your lender will be reaching back out to you and starting, starting you on your payment. So let's take a look at a company's balance sheet. This is a sample company balance sheet, but based upon the real numbers of companies that we've worked with before. So the way the balance sheet is structured is at the top are the company's assets, in the middle are the company's liabilities, and on the bottom are the company's equity. So a balance sheet is always a snapshot of a company at a particular time. So you might think of the P&L, which you are familiar with, as something that's happening over a period of time. The balance sheet is what we call the end result. So as a result of making income over a certain amount of time, we have a balance sheet at the end. So it's the end result after everything that happened. So the company's assets are in balance with the company's liabilities and equity. And a good balance sheet software, whether it's your internal control system or a spreadsheet that's set up for you, will always balance these things out for you. So at the top, we have the company's assets. In the middle, we have the company's debts. And at the bottom, we have the company's equity. Now this balance sheet is set up to also highlight recovery debts. So you can see this company here has some very basic money in its checking and savings account, about $17,000 some accounts receivable or money owed to it from its customers and some fixed assets. So this is like the equipment of the business. Below that it has some credit card balances, money it owes to its vendors. And finally it has some recovery loans. And so now you can see the PPP loan has not been forgiven and is listed here as a debt, meaning they'll have to repay it. The company also has some other outstanding long-term debts. The equity is the difference between those two. So you can see for this company, as of April 30th, they have a negative equity balance. This means that the company is underwater. It means that the company has either sustained losses for a prolonged period of time, or has used money that it has borrowed in order to continue paying owner compensation. So what we usually advise companies to do is to build a cash flow strategy to work their way out of the situation. And let me tell you why that's important. During COVID-19, many businesses are able to access recovery loans with a balance sheet that looks like this. But once things get back to normal and businesses are being underwritten by banks in the way that they usually are, this type of balance sheet would not be suitable. So we try to work with our clients to recover any uh, equity or negative equity balance. Alex, that's, that's a great, yeah, from a pursuit, that's what, uh, why pursuit, we feel that this topic is really important. Business owners, again, cash flow, you know, you're on top of your cash balance in your bank and your cash flow every day. And so why that's, that's why it can be a little confusing when post COVID, let's say you go to apply for a loan and the lender's also looking at your balance sheet. So from your perspective, you're paying all your bills. So therefore you should be a good candidate for a loan. But as Alex explaining, we're looking, we're also looking at this balance sheet because the balance sheet's telling us money owed, eventually you do have to pay that back. So we as lenders need to recognize that. And pre-COVID, before any kind of disaster, if all the profit you made, you took out of the business. We see many, many of our clients do that. I mean, that's small business owners need their earnings and they pull it out of the business. But 
as you put more money on your balance sheet, it's causing this underwater phenomenon that, that could really harm your ability to grow down the road. So thanks, Alex. Great point. So one thing I wanted to highlight for you folks is a key insight here is related to your PPP loans. So now this company took two draws of PPP. It took a first draw, which was forgiven of $26,000. And it took a second draw, which hasn't been forgiven yet of $32,000. So when your PPP loan gets forgiven, that's basically tax-free money for your business. So it's not gonna affect your business's profit, but it will benefit your balance sheet in a great way because it moves money out of debt into equity. So if this business had their second PPP loan forgiven, that would add $32,000 to their equity, which would go a long way in recovering their negative equity balance. And the reason we're showing this example to you is because this is a very common situation that we've seen. After a year of operating at losses, but using recovery loans to survive, we see many companies with balance sheets that look like this. So we wanna stress the importance of once you enter recovery mode, whenever that is for you, that not only do you achieve and save enough cash to pay your bills, pay yourself, but you also save extra cash to recover the deficit that you've built up the past year. All right, let's take it back to the, uh, to the show here. Let's take a moment to talk about cash flow. So income is unpredictable, and especially during the recovery period, because certain rules and restrictions could be extended at a moment's notice, depending on what's happening in the economy. So when we work with customers to do a projection of cash flow moving forward, specific to the recovery period, we assume that whatever your current weakened or diminished state of your business that you had during COVID-19 will continue. And the reason we wanna do that is we wanna figure out if things stay the way they are, how long will your cash last, what money is available to pay you, and what money is available to pay your debt service requirements that are sure to be coming due soon. So a few questions to ask yourself when you start this process. Number one, what are your minimal personal cash flow requirements? Now, I would recommend that you ask yourself this question and not think about your business. Seriously, ask yourself, what is my uh, housing costs, what does my uh, clothing and meals, my basic requirements for those things every single month, what are my insurance and medical costs, what really are these minimums for me and my family? And I talk to a lot of entrepreneurs about this, and they always have some sort of gut reaction to me that, oh, I don't pay myself anything for my business. Well, try not to think about that. Instead, think about what you really need, because ultimately, it's very admirable that you don't pay yourself anything from your business, but ultimately this money needs to come from somewhere to pay your personal living expenses and these minimum requirements. You wanna figure out what that is and budget for it. So if these needs are not being met by your business after you do this analysis, where is this money coming from? If indeed you do need in fact $5,000 per month to survive and you're not paying yourself $5,000 a month from your company, where is that money coming from? And finally, what are your personal financial goals for the future? It's not enough to just cover the basic minimum expenses for yourself. We do want to be able to see what it would take for you to build reserves that you need to enhance your personal net worth. Um, Alec, I might just share some um, things that Pursuit is seeing. So similar to the discussion of the business being underwater post-COVID, um, we see a lot of personal balance sheets uh, being underwater. How do we know? Um, during the application process, we do pull people's personal credit reports, and they could have historically been maintaining, you know, a good solid credit history. 
but um, post COVID or during COVID, they obviously were not taking money out of the business to pay themselves because they're keeping the business afloat. So personally, you're going underwater by taking on credit card debt. Uh, it's, the, it's similar credit card, personal credit card debt is a form of relief. And during COVID, people use that quite a bit just to keep everything together. So it's a balance of also thinking about how to repair. Um, maybe you had gone negative on the personal side and you've built up a lot of credit card debt and it is really um, taken, uh, your credit score has taken a hit. So that's also, it's balancing those two things, but like a three-legged stool, that has to be part of your, the equation to fully recover um, from, you know, from the, the, the terrible impacts of uh, COVID economics. That's right. And that's why it's so important to independently assess what are our personal cash needs. Take a moment and step away from your business and make that judgment. So when we look at the exact amount of cash that's needed to operate your business and cover all of your costs, we look at it from a global basis. So the term global liquidity means it incorporates more than just the business itself. We start with the business's cash flow. So that means the business's debts, excuse me, that means the business's expenses, that means the business's income factored into that. And that means any sort of obligations the business needs to pay on a regular basis. Now we remove from that number how much money the business needs to pay towards its debts. And this includes recovery debts. Finally, we subtract how much money needs to go towards paying the owner, paying the owners of the company. That's based upon the analysis we did in the private page. We put all three of these items together, and this is what we call global liquidity. So let's take a look at that analysis in one of our spreadsheets. So this is a basic template that shows an upside down version of cash flow. Now normally people look at a cash flow statement with cash inflow at the top and cash outflow at the bottom. But we flipped that around. And the reason that we've done that is in a, in a situation where we're recovering from a crisis, all we have is cash outflow. And we need to know what sort of cash inflow we need to make in order to meet those needs. So we start with the recovery loan program. You may have been operating every single month now and operated at that equilibrium where your diminished revenue has covered your expenses. But new loans that you have received during the crisis may now be coming due. You may have to pay your PPP loan if it becomes, uh, if it does not get forgiven. You may have to pay your EIDL loan if that, uh, you will have to pay your EIDL uh, loan after 12 months after you borrowed it. And certain other loans that have been deferred now are starting to become due. So for this sample company, you can see that certain loans have started to phase in after three or four months. At the same time, we always have to factor in what is our minimum credit card payment. So we, we might have a, a varying amount of credit card debt each month, but we wanna know what's the minimum amount we need to pay each month. Finally, we have our regular operating expenses. Now these are what you're already familiar with, your payroll, your rent, utilities, insurance, and so on. So for this company, the final item is how much money needs to go and pay, be paid towards the owners. So this company has two owners and it expects that the very bare minimum that needs to be paid to the two of them is about 7,000 a month. So let's take a look at the totals here. Altogether for this company, they need to have a total cash outflow of about 21,000 a month at the start of the year. But as some of those recovery loan programs enter repayment, that climbs to 23, and in the second year climbs to even $24,000 a month. Now you need to weigh that against how much cash flow you're generating today. So this business is making about 22,000 a month in sales. Now remember, 
worth looking at companies and assuming their diminished revenue state is continuing moving forward because we want to know what's the worst that could happen with the new expenses that are coming on board. So this business had reached an equilibrium point. It had gotten to a point where after cutting its expenses and suffering a, a loss in revenues, it's able to have a basic amount of positive cash flow, about $1,400 a month. But as you can see here, this company's recovery loans start to phase in later in the year, and it starts to operate in the area where it is spending more money than it makes. So we want to look at that as compared to our cash situation and know what amount of cash we forecast to have left as a result of these changes. Doing this analysis can help you to figure out what changes we can make to our debt structure. Do we have the option to get our loans deferred further? Can we do a refinancing? Are there any expenses that we can cut? And most importantly, what revenue goals should we set for ourselves? So if we know that this company costs 21,000 a month and grows to 24,000 a month to operate, we need to make at least that much money in order to preserve our cash. And we may need to go even higher than that or try to generate a higher monthly cash inflow in order to cover the rebuilding of our company's equity. So this is just a glimpse at the analysis that we do for small businesses to help them understand what their situation is with recovery loans, what they can expect for the near future, and what they would need to do to put their business on the road towards being healthy again. Right, I might, might add that um, to the audience out there, if you are at all familiar with cash flow projection, it's it takes a bit of getting used to um, Alex created this upside down cash flow when he showed it to pursuit we realized that that is such a great learning tool because there's nothing you can do about debt owed and your expenses so now you but it gives you that ability to say how oh, I need to drive my revenue wow um it's it's fine to say I'm going to operate you know, at a certain, I'm going to steady state revenue generation or the eye opening conclusion that I need to grow revenues for this business. Um, and also that concept of, or I'll plug it up with another loan if I, ooh, if I'm going to start drawing down on my cash and run out of cash, I guess I'll have to go for another loan. Just think about what we mentioned in the beginning about being underwater. Does that, does loans that need to be paid back, does that ever get you out of an underwater situation? So he concluded it really doesn't. It's it's just, it's a, it's a vicious cycle. So we're here to help, you know, um, businesses think about ways to grow their revenue. If you have a loan, let's say from a, a pursuit from another lender that you know is going to generate, you know, a, a 10%, 15% increase in revenue, that's a good investment. But loans to just keep this afloat um, is, we, we want people to sit back and think about the implications of that really. So I want to just recap here uh, a few important things to remember when you start to look at your company's financials and do this type of analysis. Number one, try to do a good classification of your debt. Is it a grant? Is it a loan? Is that loan forgivable? Are your grants taxable or tax free? Second, try to map out when exactly your debt repayment will start. This will help you to do that cash flow analysis. Third, Apart from setting aside enough cash to pay our bills, we also want to try to rebuild our company's equity after suffering from losses over the last year. And finally, when we think about how much cash flow that we need, we want to think about our real personal cash flow needs beyond just what the business can do, but what we really need to cover our minimum personal living expenses. So that's about it for me. Um, thank you for the time today, Carol. Oh, 
thank you. We're you know we're so grateful. The demo that um, that Alec has walked through, we offer to our pursuit loan clients. So Alec Marfizi has been working personally one on one with our existing loan clients, but we wanted him to share his knowledge with everybody out there. If you are at all interested, um, on the last page you'll see our um, our website. So just generally, a lot of great content, information, articles. We're going to convert this into an article as well. Um, but you, um, you'll get a recording, but you can find other recordings at PursuitLending.com. The PursuitLending.com dash um, backslash apply. If you are an existing business or even a startup business looking um, to see what Pursuit has to offer, please check us out. You just want to shoot us an email. Um, give us some feedback on this webinar. If you want to learn more, we can share these templates with you. If you'd like to connect with Alec Marfizi, please do um, send us an email. Tell, tell us the webinar that you were interested in and we can connect you. He's, he's done great one-on-one -on -one consulting for all kinds of businesses. Like I said, um, pursued clients get access to Alec, which is which is really awesome. So I think we will wrap up there. And um, this is a great topic. We wish you all the best of luck. Congratulations for having survived COVID and light at the end of the tunnel. You um, using these tools, we can get you right back on track, reach out to us, and we will connect you with the resources and financing that you need to do so. So thanks everybody and take care. Thanks Alec again. Thank you. Take care.